So we introduced in a previous video that when we take the random variable s squared, representing the distribution of sample variances, we multiply it by n minus 1, where n is the sample size, and divide this by sigma square, which is the true value of the population variance. Well, we said that this is going to be distributed as a chi-square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, where chi-square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom is the sum of n minus 1 squares of standard normal distributions. Okay. And so this is probably one of the, the, the bigger leaps of faith in introductory statistics. We sort of got close to showing that this was the case, but sort of waved our hands a little bit. Um, and just to the extent that you maybe found this a little bit frustrating, we're going to run through why this is the case, why it turns out that, in fact, this is going to be chi-square distributed with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And so if you're not too strong in your math, don't worry too much. Just sit back and see how far, how far you can follow. In the end, we're just sort of doing some little manipulations of random variables. Don't make it a bit difficult, though. So let's, to fix this problem, to figure out why this is the case, let's start off with a standard normal random variable. Not a standard normal, a non-standard random variable. Okay, so we'll say xi is distributed normally with mean mu and standard deviation sigma squared. Okay. So, if we take this random variable, minus the mu, its mean, and divide by its standard deviation, not the variance, just the standard deviation, well, we've covered this is called standardization, and this is going to give us a, another normal, normal random variable, but with a mean zero, and a standard deviation or a variance of one. So we've got a standard normal distribution. Okay. And so if I take a bunch of xi's where they're identically distributed but um, independent of each other, well, then I'm going to get a bunch of standard normal random variables by doing this transformation. Those standard normal variables, they're going to be independent of each other as well. Well, I can do something here where I can take a sum from i equals 1 to n of n of these random variables, and I can square them. And so since we know each thing inside here is going to be a standard normal distribution, we know that the sum of n squares of those standard normal distributions, we know it's going to be distributed as a chi-square distribution with n degrees of freedom. And this isn't too hard. You know, with, This is actually how we've defined how we've defined the chi-square distribution. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with this, and we're going to perform a few manipulations. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say we're actually going to introduce a random variable representing the sample mean into the mix. Because right now we've got the population mean, but usually we're dealing with the sample means. So we're going to introduce the sample mean, and we're going to do that basically by adding it. And minusing it from the top here. And so we're going to get xi minus x bar plus x bar, so it just cancels out, minus mu, divided by sigma all squared. Okay. And so we've got the same thing here since we've just added and subtracted x bar, the random variable representing the sample mean. But what we're going to do is we're going to expand these brackets just to get a bit more information out. And so we're going to expand this squared term um, and also just carry across the summation notation. And so because this is a, a squared sign, we're going to get three terms. The first one is going to be this first term squared. So we're going to get xi minus x bar divided by sigma, all squared. Okay. We're going to get a second term, which is going to be sum from i equals 1 to n of x bar minus mu on sigma, all squared. Then we're going to get a cross product here. We're going to get plus 2 times the sum. Well, actually, because x bar and mu, or well, because they don't actually depend on this index i, we can bring them at the front. So we can say 2 times x bar minus mu of the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar. Okay. 
Well, so the first thing we're going to notice is that when we compute this, this term here, well, the sum from i equals 1 to n of our data, well, that's just going to be n times the sample mean. Because we've just calculated the sample mean without dividing it by n, so we're going to get n times the sample mean. But when we sum this second term up, n times, we're going to get n repeats of minus x bar, and that's just going to be equal to 0. And so what happens to this entire last term is it just gets annihilated, it goes to 0. Okay, well, let's rewrite this expression in terms of what's left. We've got the sum from i equals 1 to n of, I'm going to bring 1 on sigma squared out the front, just to rewrite it, of xi minus x bar all squared plus, plus, well, we can rewrite this second term actually. Because let's, let's go back a second. We've got some data that's normally distributed like this. Okay. And we know that when our data is normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared, then the sample mean is going to be distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared on n. Okay. So, so, we've got this interesting situation here where if we take x bar we minus mu when we divide by the standard deviation, which is going to be sigma squared on root n. Well, that's going to be normally distributed with mean 0 and variance 1. OK, and so let's see if we can rearrange this to get something similar to this term here. Well, notice that x bar is just the sample mean, doesn't depend on i, mu it's just the population mean doesn't depend on i, and sigma also doesn't depend on i. And so we, when we take the sum from i equals 1 to n of some term that doesn't depend on i, we just get an n out the front. Okay? So we're going to get n on sigma squared times x bar minus mu squared. Okay? I'm going to rewrite this first term. 1 on sigma squared times the sum from i equals 1 to n xi minus x bar squared. And we'll notice now that we can actually bring this term inside the brackets. Okay, So we can take this term inside the brackets is x bar minus mu divided by just sigma or bringing sigma inside the brackets again divided by root n all squared. Because when we when we pass this through we're going to have okay sigma divided by n. This root n is going to pop up the top. It's going to get squared and it's going to pop out as an n there. So we've just rearranged this. But we established over here, whoops, little error. We established over here that um, when we take this distribution of sample means, we minus the mean of that distribution and divide by the standard deviation of that distribution, we're going to get a standard normal distribution. And well, here we've got that standard normal distribution, but we've taken its square, okay? We've taken the square of that standard normal distribution. So we're thinking in the back of our minds that this object over here is distributed as a chi-square distribution with a degree of freedom, okay? In the back of our minds, we're thinking that. And in the other half of our minds, we're thinking, oh, we're just remembering that this whole expression, this w up here, is distributed as a chi-square distribution with n degrees of freedom. No, that's okay. And so what happens if we take an independent chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom and subtract it away from an independent chi-square distribution with n degrees of freedom? Well, because this is just the sum of n independent normal random variables, and this is just a normal random variable, so it's squared normal random variable. When we minus this from both sides, what's left is going to be distributed as a chi-square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And so there's one final way that we can rewrite what's in here. Because notice that, okay, if we, if we just divide what's in this box here, by n minus 1, well that's just the distribution of sample variances because xi minus x bar all squared on n minus 1, sum it all up, that's the formula for the sample variance. And so we can rewrite this last term, rewrite this first term here as n minus 1 times the sample variance because we have to multiply this by n minus 1 and divide it by n minus 1. We leave the n minus 1 at the top here, but dividing this by n minus 1 we get just the sample variance. Okay. And then we've still got this sigma squared out the front here. Okay. Just gotta make sure we use a capital S, because this is the distribution random variable. 
Okay, and we know that well, this whole thing was equal to a chi-square distribution with n degrees of freedom. We know this is equal to a chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom. And by minusing this away from both sides, we're going to get a chi-square distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. So you can see the argument we made before about, we sort of got to uh, about this stage here. And we sort of said, oh, look, it's, we're just going to lose a degree of freedom. This is what's really happening is that we are losing a degree of freedom because that little discrepancy between the sample mean and the true mean, when we sum it all up over n different observations, which is going to end up as a chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom. So we're literally losing one degree of freedom in that sense. Okay, so let's look at where we started. We started by constructing a chi-square distribution with n degrees of freedom um, from just a, a normal distribution of data by normalizing some data xi. And then we introduced the sample mean because we knew that was going to be important. We introduced it um, by adding it and subtracting it again. Then we separated this out into several terms. It turns out that one of them was equal to zero. Um, one of them became what we're interested in, this, this term, this transformation of our distribution of sample means, sample variances. And the other term turned out to be a chi-square distribution. So we knocked one of the degrees of freedom off the whole expression to leave n minus 1 times the distribution of sample variances divided by the true population variances to be distributed as a chi-square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And so that's why uh, we have this, this sort of fancy empirical fact, which we can use to conduct tests and construct confidence intervals.